Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University. We debut two feature stories from Middle Tennessee News, our student-run media partner, that show a different side to Paris as discovered in a recent study abroad adventure. We tell you about the work by the June Anderson Center for Women and Non-Traditional Students during October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we turn the spotlight on MTSU's Speech Language Hearing Clinic, which has been serving our community and providing invaluable professional experience to our students for more than half a century. I'm Andrew Oppmann, and this is Out of the Blue. Welcome to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. It's a joy for us to feature the great work by journalists working for Middle Tennessee News, our student-run media partners. Today, we spotlight the work of Christy Jones and Cam Eschenfelter, who produced feature segments from a recent study abroad adventure in Paris. Christy and Cam, welcome to the program. Glad to have you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. It's really exciting what you guys did, and, I, and I'd like to give our viewers a sample of the study abroad experience that you did and how this Middle Tennessee news segments that you produced are gonna be premiering on True Blue TV. We're really excited about that coming up soon. So Christy, first let's start about your journey academically to where you are at MTSU. You're a grad student, right? Yes, I got my undergrad at MTSU. I majored in journalism. I had what feels like a million minors. I <laughs> finished um, an undergraduate thesis within the journalism program. I created a true crime podcast and that's kind of followed me into some of my graduate research that I'm starting to do within the thesis that I'll make for my graduate program. So um, I was able to get a job right out of college. So I'm actually a producer at WKRN. So I work the graveyard shift. So after this, I'll be going over to work about 1030 tonight. Oh my but gosh, that is so terrific. Wow, wow. So you, I mean, you're working around the clock. Always. <laughs> Well, Cam, um, true story, um, not the first time I've seen you before, I love it. <laughs> you played tennis with my daughter Sarah. Um, tell us about your journey, How do, uh, what are you majoring in? Uh, I'm actually majoring in uh, geosciences, um, specifically uh, working with LIDAR to make uh, maps, kind of cartography. But I got the chance to come on the trip because of my parents working in the industry. Mm -hmm. And who are they by chance? Uh, Dr. <laughs> Eschenfelder and Mr. Eschenfelder, Mr. Dan Eschenfelder. Dan and Christine, they, they, are, they are fantastic and they're partners with us in yes. Middle Tennessee News. They are faculty advisors to make that happen. So let's talk about the trip. Uh, when did you go, Chrissy? We went in the second half of May. It was fantastic. We knew we wanted to go in there getting just the stuff that the average person doesn't go to France to see. And that's France, and you went to? Yes, it, it, we were in Paris for the bulk of it, and then we had a few kind of day trips that you'll kind of see a little bit more of that in the full program of where we kind of even further excursions into France that we went. So yeah, you're just trying to tell some untold stories, or at least yes, relatively yeah. uh, untold stories. And um, the two of you, of course, on the program, we're gonna show your pieces, but there were more than just the two of you on this trip, right? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. So how many, how many joined you? Chrissy? There were about six or seven of us, yeah, um, seven faculty yeah. mm -hmm. included. Yeah, it was a really small group, which kind of made it nice because we got to kind of be really personal with each other, kind of get like the stories we wanted to do, kind of see our strengths come through and then kind of help each other along with that. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to be able to kind of have a knit group for those two weeks. That's cool. Language barrier? Did any of you uh, encounter any issues or difficulty because of that? A little bit, yeah. Um, I mean, I. I had a little bit of French experience from high school, but it was not enough for didn't me. Didn't carry all didn't the way. Didn't carry me at all in France. No, um, it, it's a little we hard. We could order. Yeah. yeah, we could order. We could order. We could say hi. Um, uh, people in France they like when you would try yeah. to speak their language. They they're very appreciative of it. Um, but besides that, yeah, it's a little hard to talk. Well, we weren't having any in-depth conversations no, all, with no. the Parisians. Well, I love that you tr you're trying something different and going to some different stories than the things that typically you would see. So, Cam, let's let's start with you. We're going to set up your piece here, and because we want to show it, uh, talk about what your off the beaten path story was. Yes. Yeah, so, um, like I said, I'm in geosciences. So I got the chance to go to a um, an apartment complex um, or. Well, a little apartment owned by um, a man and a woman who run their own little map place. 
Uh, they collect globes and maps, some even dating back to like the 15th century. Um, and they're actually right, they're about a mile or so away from the National Library of France, um, where they have some of the biggest globes in France. So they, um, they're very close, but people don't really know about them. And I, we heard about them on a podcast, and we talked to them and asked if we could come and interview them. Uh, and we did, and it was one of the greatest experiences I've had. I, I, they're fantastic people. They were very open about uh, what they do and what they collect, and they're so passionate about what they do. So it was a really good opportunity. That's terrific. Well, let's not wait. Let's show that clip. Tourists in Paris are often seen with a map in hand, looking for all the iconic sites. But those who go off the beaten path can find maps leading to some unexpected discoveries. Every time, every day you can discover something new you never saw, so it's really interesting. If you follow Beatrice Loblarock up a quiet staircase and down a small hallway, you'll find a treasure trove, a library founded in the late 50s by her father. He was also a collector. He was really fond uh, of geography and books, old books. And when I was 15, I say to him, no, never, I will never do it. <laughs> and 10 years later, oh, maybe. <laughs> the collection of maps and books here is remarkable. Some of the maps are quite old. I like Italian maps from the 16th century. And some are more modern. It's, it's, it's funny. Not all maps in their collection deal with geography. Some are about different visions of the world. Uh, people are afraid uh, they didn't know about animals, so, so often it, it was whales, or, but, but you can see sea monsters in the sea on the maps. And some of the treasures at this off-the-beaten-path library aren't maps at all, like these vintage postcards. Beatrice enjoys meeting visitors and collectors from all over the world, and even though the collection is extensive, she's always discovering something new in a world where new lines are always being drawn. It's exciting. <laughs> it, it, it moves. Every, every, every year, every, every century, the boundaries are moving. You'll need an appointment to see these treasures for yourself. Look for the 13th arrondissement on your map of Paris. Cameron Eschenfelder. Middle Tennessee News, off the beaten path. Cam, that was great. Thanks for sharing that. And Christy, let's talk about your, what was your off the beaten path story? So mine, we kind of didn't really think about it until we were there just searching through a city. So we were in Montmartre, and we noticed that there were just the locks everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we kind of figured out that they used to be all on just one bridge on the Seine River. But that bridge was getting too heavy. They thought it was going to eventually fall and be a hazard to Paris. So they took it down, they replaced it, and now like someone is guarding that bridge, making sure they cannot put any more locks there. So it's kind of exploded across the city. So in this clip, you're going to kind of see like some people who don't necessarily love the locks, even though the city of love, they kind of what it stands for. Some people who really don't really get it. Mm -hmm. Let's see Chrissy's clip. When you think of Paris, you think of the Eiffel Tower, the baguettes, and a romantic getaway. But what used to be contained to only one bridge has now exploded across the city. People are turned away from the original lock bridge and sent around the city of love. Just one ride up a trolley and you'll be in Montmartre. With thousands visiting the Sacre Coeur every day, the fences that used to be bare are now stamped with couples love. But some people don't think they'll be joining this trend anytime soon. I don't feel like making making one. I don't know. It's a bit I guess a cliche. Kind of, kind of cliche, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really understand the the reason. The reason no. behind it. No. Christy, great. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, I, I want to ask each of you, what was the biggest takeaway that you got from this trip, Chrissy? Honestly, the culture, just kind of learning about what they do, how they do it a little bit differently than us. And I guess like everybody could say the food. It was fantastic. There wasn't a meal <laughs> that we didn't love or there wasn't something that we weren't willing to try the entire time that we were there. It was great. Great. Cam, what about you? Yeah, I'd have to agree about the food, definitely. <laughs> um, I mean, the day, the first day we got there, there was like five euros for like a coffee and a sandwich and a dessert, and it was all fantastic. Um, but also, yet, yeah, um, just a lot of the experiences that I got to experience, mm -hmm. uh, all the memories I got to make. Um, 
I didn't realize how close uh, you would be able to connect with another country. I mean, I, I see photos about Paris and I'll hear about them all the time, uh, hear about Paris, but it's not really until you go there that you really see what it's like. So. That's great. Cam Esenfelter, Christy Jones, reporters for Middle Tennessee News, our, our partner institution. Thank you both for sharing your stories. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. And we'll be right back. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. Do you want more from your college experience? At Middle Tennessee State University, that's exactly what you get. More majors, more opportunities, more guaranteed scholarships. Up to $20,000 over four years. MTSU, Tennessee's University of Opportunities. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. The June Anderson Center for Women and Non-Traditional Students is a tremendous resource for the diverse populations of our student body. And during the month of October, the center is leading observances by the campus for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Joining us to tell us about it is the center's director, Dr. Megan Whiffley. Dr. Whiffley, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Tell our viewers about the June Anderson Center because I, I, I know because I'm on the campus that you do amazing outreach work and you're serving so many students. Thank you, yeah. So the June Anderson Center for Women and Non-Traditional Students, it's a long title, but we do <laughs> serve everybody on campus. It's just that the programs that we do are a little bit more for female identifying students or non-traditional identifying students. And on our campus, that's anybody who's 25 and older or married, widowed, divorced, mm -hmm. or a parent or caregiver, or current or former military, <laughs> or goes to school part-time, works full-time. So really we do serve just about everybody on our campus. That's a, that's a long list and it does cross a, a, across many of our populations. It really does. And especially now we're having more and more non-traditional students coming back to campus. Mm -hmm. And the types of things that you do at the center, we're gonna talk about the month of October because mm -hmm. you've got some great things, but, but just kind of give the, our viewers a sense of some of that support you provide. Yeah, so we obviously do things for female identifying topics such as uh, Women's History Month in the spring. We do things for Parenting Student Month, that was in September. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of different um, fun things that we do. We do a monthly craft night, we do a monthly lunch and learn where we talk about different topics every month and I provide lunch and students can come learn about whatever it is we're talking about. We have a large grant in our office that we do programming for dating violence, domestic violence, sexual assault and stalking. So we do also uh, do awareness things for all of those months as well, such as this month in October. And this month, the month of October, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and you've got a, a variety of programs uh, that you've planned for the month, but let's talk about the, the importance of why our attention should be focused on this topic. Yeah, so um, first of all, you know full well that our True Blue pledge came from a domestic violence situation here on campus, but 13% of students in college deal with domestic violence, or women, I'm sorry, 13% of women in college deal with domestic violence, 9% of men, and 23% of non-binary students. So it's really a large, staggering number that we see on college campuses. 
we find that um, students don't really understand that domestic violence has to do with roommate situations as well. It is not just a family situation, while it, it is mostly mm -hmm. that, but um, so many students have roommates that they either know or they don't know, and then they end up in a situation that's really not conducive for their learning. Mm -hmm. And October, as we mentioned, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Let's talk about some of the things that you've got in store for the month of October and what will that entail? Yeah, one of the things that we're doing all month long is we are getting bras from the various uh, constituents we have across campus, either student organizations, students, faculty, staff, and they can drop them off either in our office or one of our other locations. Um, most people don't know that our local Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Center has a rape examination room and then they also have the domestic shelter in it as well and so a lot of people who go to the shelter a lot of people who go to the forensic examination room leave without any clothing um, just because it's been used for any kind of uh, kit testing mm -hmm. or if it's in a domestic violence situation they may have left in the middle of the night without any clothes um, so in conjunction with breast cancer awareness month which is also something that's near and dear to my heart my mom had breast cancer when she was 37 we are doing a uh, drive for bras and comfy clothing mm -hmm. uh, to be able to donate to the Rutherford County Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Center. And that's throughout the entire month the of The whole October. month long, yep. And if I want to uh, make a contribution to that, where do I go? Yeah, all you need to do is drop anything off in the June Anderson Center, the Rec Center, the Alumni House, or Communication Studies Department. We have boxes in each of those locations. You can also contact our office and we can definitely get you, you can pick, we can pick something up or we can tell you how to donate uh, without bringing something into the office. Fantastic, and um, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more at the end of the segment, but let's talk about your website yeah. because that's a good place. Where can I go to yeah. find all of this? On the main page of the June Anderson Center website, mtsu.edu slash jac. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, we put information about each of our events that we have at the bottom. So we'll have information about all of those drop-off locations as well as the necessary items. And you've got some individual events happening on certain days, um, starting out the month on October 5th with a Domestic Violence Awareness Month Lunch and Learn. Yeah, so the Lunch and Learn is one of those uh, topics that I told you about where we bring students around, we feed them lunch, we talk about whatever that month's topic is. And again, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So we have a panel of local people and both on and off campus who are coming and giving more information about each of the topics the local resources that we have as well as the on-campus resources. And fantastic, and where will that be? Um, it'll be in the Student Union Room 210. Fantastic. Um, October 20th, Wear Purple Day. Yeah, it's so it's an annual event across the nation where if you wear purple, it's in recognition of domestic violence awareness. What we'll want people to do is take pictures of themselves and then uh, tag us on Instagram at MT Power of One. Also, that, mm -hmm. that, that evening, day, yeah. uh, the open mic night yes. talk about that so we'll be having an open mic night so people can do slam poetry they can do anything that they've written songs about uh, extemporaneous speeches anything like that um, that has to do with any type of violence we do ask that anybody sends us their submission ahead of time so that we can take a look at that and just make sure that it's appropriate for the audience that we have but we invite everybody to come and see it and we're in the chris young cafe that evening oh that'll be wonderful mm -hmm. that'll yeah. be wonderful this is a I know from past years, this is a, these are emotional, impactful um, occurrences. That there's a lot of things being said and, really and a lot is. of emotions. There is, and we do have content warnings at at all of our events, um, just so that people do know what topics we will be discussing. Mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of why the center. I mean, I know there's the name of the center and the mission of the center, but the, I, I guess I'm looking for the what you and your team derive from this, the, the, um, the contribution to the community itself. How does, that, how does that really make all of us feel? Yeah, so the one thing that we always say to anybody who comes to any of our events or any of our tabling or, or that is, come see us, we'll get you in the right place. If you need Kleenex, we have it. If you have, need candy, we have it. Mm -hmm. We are kind of that one-stop shop. If you don't know where to go, come see us in the June Anderson Center because we will really kind of put you in that space. We'll get you to see who you need to see. We'll walk you there ourselves if we have to. And um, we just really want people to feel at home on this campus. And that's a really a lot of what we do. Dr. Withley, thank you for all that you do. And thank, thank you for you. the Junior Anderson Center. Thank you very much. We really appreciate all your support. And we'll be right back.
I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. The Charlie and Hazel Daniels Veterans and Military Family Center located at Middle Tennessee State University is the largest and most comprehensive on an academic campus in the nation. We lost our patriot Charlie on 6 July 2020. The creation of the General's Fund was his last public event in support of our military. So many men and women that have served, that expected to be able to have their tuition or certain assistance being given to them, and that money evaporated. With the establishment of the General Fund is to make sure that all those men and women can get through MTSU and pursue what they thought they could do when they came on back. We're extremely proud that the Predators have identified the need to help make this fund one of the best at our university for our veterans. Join us, contribute to the continuation of Charlie's legendary support of our military. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. For 55 years, the Speech Language Hearing Clinic at MTSU has built a reputation as one of the few in the nation providing both community service and practical experience. They do this for undergraduates seeking to become pathologists and audiologists, and they serve children and adults seeking help with a variety of communication disorders. Here to tell us more about the clinic is its director, Dr. Karen Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome to the program. Thank you, excited to be here. I am so proud of the Speech, Language, and Hearing Clinic. Let's talk about what you offer in, in terms of the uh, undergraduate experience, but also the community service. Absolutely, where our university clinic is really part of our program, which is a pre-professional program, and we are aiming to prepare our students to apply to grad school. And so what's unique about our program is that we offer that clinical experience. And given the fact that we are one of 13 undergraduate only programs that offer clinical experience, our students stand out. And so with that, they are able to provide services to the community in our university clinic, but they also, we go out to the community. Mm -hmm. And so we are serving adults and children through um, assistant daycare programs or even Head Start. And so this is just a unique experience that our students are able to um, develop those speech and language assessment and intervention skills. 55 years old, Yes. this, this program. Yes. Um, you've got all these great resources. I think you're better known to the community and maybe even reputationally outside the campus than you are on campus because I don't think everybody understands you have nine treatment rooms, three observation rooms, a sensory room, and a soundproof booth for hearing evaluations. And now you've got a new life skills room. So when you talk about the clinical experience you're offering students, this is the real deal, right? It is, it really is. And I think that oftentimes our program is confused with communications. Yes. And, um, and we're also located in the uh, Alumni Memorial Gym, the lower level, so right. we're kind of hidden. <laughs> right, but, right. But we're doing a good job trying to um, expose the campus to our program through our student ambassadors, but also offering services to the campus. And I think that's something that we are striving to do more of because we offer free services to students here at mm -hmm. MTSU and any faculty, 50% discount, and uh, our, our community, anyone from the community is on a sliding scale. But um, absolutely, we do a lot with that community and we're trying to do um, better and becoming more visible on campus and let, uh, let MTSU family know that we are here and we have a service that is so important to just not um, adults, but children, adolescents, college students. Mm -hmm. And you've got a great story to tell. Talk about the, the, the people you help and some of the things that they're struggling with that you're helping them overcome. Yes, I think a lot of people 
people are not aware that between five to 10 percent Americans present with a communication disorder. So in our clinic, we have an array of clients. So from young preschoolers to adults and even when we say the geriatric population. And so some of those disorders are speech disorders and that can be characterized by the difficulty of producing certain sounds like uh, the T's and D's, mm -hmm. R's and L's uh, correctly individuals that may have a fluency disorder, which most may know this as stuttering. So we assist um, um, individuals that need help with that, as well as uh, individuals diagnosed with disorders such as like autism. So they have difficulty expressing and using language. So we're working with them on how to use vocabulary, their comprehension, and as for adults, many of us are now caretakers and you have adults that have experienced strokes. So we are working with them in regards to uh, uh, regenerating those skills that, that, was, that are lost. And so being able to think and remember and um, as well as even eating safely, we actually work with that as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know during the pandemic, we had to, we had to calm, uh, calm down operations somewhat, yes. but now you're fully open. Fully open, and, yes. And really doing, since the beginning of this semester, a lot of business, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And as you mentioned, the pandemic, we were still able to serve um, um, some clients during that time. We had like more of a soft open. Mm -hmm. And so um, we made sure that we were abiding by the CDC guidelines and wearing our plastic mask. And our clients were so uh, wonderful and abiding by the guidelines let us know if they had uh, uh, tested positive and we were able to put um, um, rules in place to provide service safely to our clients as well as for our students. Mm -hmm. And then for our students' education, we used technology. Simucase was a program that we were able to use where students studied simulated uh, um, cases that were of real people. And so they were able to understand assessment as well as intervention. And so they didn't lose a lot of learning, but That's it was just an adjustment. But but when you speak about uh, the opportunities that this affords students, other universities that may have similar programs, you, like you said, there's only 13 in the nation that have this on their campus. So where they're getting that professional experience with you yes. here. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the one thing that we tell our students when they are preparing to apply to grad school. I said, you have the leg up because they actually have experience mm -hmm. working with clients. They know how to write lesson plans, how to collect data. So this is the paperwork and experiences that they, that they will get at the graduate level, but they end up serving as mentors mm -hmm. <laughs> to many of their peers at the graduate level because um, they've had this experience. And the um, other thing that's unique too, that if we have students that do not go on to grad school, they actually graduate and they can work as SOP assistants, particularly in the school system. Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, that's that's the advantage that when I'm when I'm out and traveling with the admissions team that students, prospective students already know that about yes. us. Because if you're really interested in studying this, like a few of our other programs, they know that we're the, the place to go to get this. Yes. Yes. I know you have a website. I know it spells out everything that the clinic does. Can you tell our viewers where to find that? Yes, mtsu.edu slash slhclinic. Fantastic. Dr. Davis, thank you for all you do for the campus and the community. This is great work. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And this does wrap up this edition of Out of the Blue. A reminder, you can catch news about the campus 24 hours a day by going to our website, mtsunews.com. You can also find additional special content on our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Broadcasting from the Center for Educational Media, I'm Andrew Ottman. Stay safe, stay on course, and remain true blue.